Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim Bittner, and I'm with the ESRD National Coordinating Center. Thank you for joining us today for the ESRD NCC Patient Education Quickener. The ESRD NCC Quickener events are held in partnership with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We are hosting these 30-minute events weekly. They feature patient and professional subject matter experts from around the country sharing how they or their organization are coping with situations related to COVID-19. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know this call is being recorded and will be posted on the NCC COVID Quickenar webpage, usually within 72 hours. Let's take a look at the agenda for today's call. Today, we have two speakers. First, Donna DiBello De Silva, who, will be, who is a registered nurse and is the Quality Improvement Director with the ES, Florida ESRD Network 7 in Tampa, Florida. Also joining us is Nialte Gedney, who is a home hemodialysis dialyzer and the current treasurer and past vice president of Home Dialyzers United. Today they will discuss considering home dialysis in a COVID-19 environment. Towards the end of the call, we will take question and answers uh, from our audience. Uh, so um, if you have questions now that you think you'll like to ask the um, panelists um, coming up, please send in, use the chat box to send in your questions. Uh, next slide, please. So about this call, you're gonna hear from kidney patients who share tips for coping within the COVID-19 environment. Uh, we're gonna provide some real world experiences for others to use, to put into use, and then we like to engage in weekly calls on varying topics. Next slide. So we're going to begin the conversation with uh, Donna De Silva. She is the Quality Improvement Director with the Florida ESRD Network 7. Donna, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jerome. Next slide, please. So I want to thank you all for um, inviting me to speak with you today. You know, I've been very fortunate um, to be a modality educator for many years and educated patients not yet on dialysis, as well as patients who have been on dialysis and maybe are thinking about choosing another modality. And you know, I've often heard from patients who were in center that it can be very stressful. You know, um, restricted diets, you know, they have a set schedule three days a week and they experience oftentimes good and bad days. So now add the COVID-19 environment, and we all know that this has been a very, very stressful time for patients, for families, and for their caregivers. Some of the challenges that they're um, coming across are, you know, now everyone's wearing masks. And as part of the network, we talk to patients and we get a lot of calls from patients saying that the clinics want them to wear, you know, want them to wear masks through the whole treatment. And obviously, you know, it's always safety first for patients, but wearing masks now in center is, is common. They, it's often one three to four hours all day, every day. When patients come into the clinic in center, they, are, um, they have to, you know, have their temperatures checked and they have this pre-exam questions before they actually come into dialysis. Um, again, they have the same routine. And, they also look around and sometimes they may not see their favorite PCT or social worker available for them to speak with because they're not, they have now taken on other roles. We're finding that, you know, staff also get sick um, as well as patients do. And so oftentimes they're finding that roles are crossing over and social workers are helping with some of the PCT um, activities or are um, helping in other clinics as well. So there are staff shortages. Everyone is trying to um, stay safe and, you know, and keep everyone healthy. And it's just a very stressful, stressful time. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits of home dialysis versus incentive during this um, COVID-19. So when patients are incentive, you know, they're exposed at least three times a week for that three and a half, four hours that they're on dialysis. Patients who are dialyzing at home, however, don't have that exposure. They're at home, they may be dialyzing by themselves if they're able, or they have a caregiver with them. Patients that are going in center at this time um, often have someone taking them to and from the clinic where home dialysis patients do not. Home dialysis patients are dialyzing at home. 
so there's no travel involved for them. The social distancing is mandating that we are staying six feet apart, and in the dialysis clinic, as you know, um, they are doing their best to keep patients six feet apart, but between the machines sometimes and the size of the chairs, it might not be quite um, six feet apart, but um, still that distance is trying to be maintained, where again, when you do dialysis at home, that isn't um, really a consideration because you're dialyzing in your particular area that you're dialyzing set up um, for, your, um, for your home dialysis. Another um, very important um, issue when dialyzing in center right now are the food restrictions. So you come into dialysis, you have your pre-exam, you put on, you have your mask on, and you wear that for the three and a half, four hours. And during that time, they really, they're really asking that you don't eat or drink, right? You have to keep your mask on your face. So that can be uncomfortable, and patients now have to plan, eat early, eat after. Same thing with, you know, um, bringing something to drink, where, again, if you're dialyzing at home, that isn't a consideration. You eat, you know, when you want and drink when you want, and your diet is much more liberal um, than if you were only dialyzing three days a week. And then, again, we talked a little bit about it, wearing a mask for the entire treatment, including traveling um, for that long time, can be um, you know, troublesome for some patients. And um, again, with home dialysis, that isn't an issue. Next slide, please. So not that home dialysis um, is the end all, and it's not for everyone, we know that, but um, it is a great way to do dialysis during COVID-19. I'd love to talk a little bit about what it looked like pre-COVID-19 and, and sort of what it looks like now for patients. So if we start at the beginning and we talk about education for patients, typically the patient would go into the clinic, a nurse would educate the patient, show them the equipment, and kind of show them how they would set up um, their equipment in their, in their station, let's say, in, in their home. But now with COVID-19, they're doing more um, tele-education. They're sending out literature to the patients, and then maybe through FaceTime or um, another venue, <laughs> or another venue, they are um, actually talking to the patients and showing them the equipment through their own um, video meetings. And, but the good thing is they now can reverse that and the patient can show the dialysis nurse where they would like to dialyze and the nurse can kind of help them look and set up and prepare for um, dialyzing at home, the equipment, and then where uh, would be best for them to do their dialysis. So it's actually working as kind of an interesting new experience for patients who are um, interested in home and, and getting ready to start home. Next, um, when a patient is preparing for home dialysis, whether it's, um, it, well, in particular for peritoneal dialysis, typically they would have a peritoneal dialysis catheter placed and then also a temporary access so while that peritoneal dialysis catheter is healing, they would go into the clinic three days a week and dialyze until their peritoneal catheter is ready to be used. But now we have some nephrologists that are actually placing, having that peritoneal dialysis catheter placed and then sending the patients right to the home clinic. And then the patient, they call it urgent start, PD, and then the patient will actually dialyze in a room by themselves um, with a nurse all to themselves um, to ensure that they're getting um, good dialysis and keeping sterile um, that new catheter that they just had placed. So it's a, um, instead of again, exposing that patient for a couple of weeks prior to starting home dialysis, they're um, sending them to the clinic and having them start right away with maybe a gentler form of the home dialysis that they will be learning. When patients are dialyzing at home, typically they have supplies sent to their home, delivered to their home, and usually the driver will uh, bring those supplies in and stack them and, you know, stock them and re, re um, sort of turn them according to the due date. And um, now some, some um, concessions and some new arrangements have to be made for some patients because the drivers aren't always able to bring those in the house, so they may bring them to the front door, and then um, patients are having to um, find other ways to um, get the supplies in. And then some do have some drivers that are able to bring them in, but of course they have the masks 
and um, the proper PPE to, um, to, to bring those supplies in. Home visits, just like um, in-center, patients are being seen by the physician. Home visits, drawing labs, Patients now don't have to go into the home clinic. They can have labs, uh, depending on their insurance, drawn close to their home. But the monthly visit, they are doing telehealth. Home dialysis um, has been ahead of the game with telehealth and telemedicine, and they've been sort of working on this for a while, where InCenter is just using it a little bit. Um, so they have a little more experience with it, but they are still able to see the whole entire team. So they have the doctor, they have the nurse, the social worker, and, every, and everyone there to um, assess them and um, actually see, you know, how they're doing. And um, then they go into the home clinic if necessary, maybe to receive iron um, and have that face-to-face. -face. Next slide, please. So just a few considerations and things to think about with the telehealth, because CMS has issued guidelines and they really want uh, all aspects of healthcare to be using telehealth and tele telemedicine. And there are many pathways to use. So there's online applications, video connect portals, and um, it, during COVID-19, this is a great way and a very efficient way to lessen the exposure um, to patients traveling to and from the clinic and still have the entire team participate. Next slide, please. And so I just wanted to say in, in closing, you know, telehealth, te telemedicine um, is a great way to, to care for the patient and make sure, you know, the patient has everything they need, all eyes on the patient. Um, but sometimes patients at home will say, you know, we are missing our support groups. We are missing our peer mentors that the in-center facilities have. So many um, have already been joining online support groups. So we have worked with many of um, our patient experts at the network, and we've kind of come up with a nice list of online support groups. So we wanted to share that with you today. You know, if you feel whether you're in center or you're at home, um, you uh, have questions, you'd like to talk to other patients, keep in touch in a safe way with other patients, maybe learn more about home dialysis, which we hope you will. Um, we'd like you to go onto our website and take a look at the online um, support groups and, and chat, chat groups that we have and really um, learn as much as you can about home dialysis. And then also, um, we hope you'll continue to, to join these calls um, that the NCC are, are having these quick and eyes and um, learn as much as you can to stay safe uh, during this COVID-19 environment. So thank you all very much again. And Kim or Jerome, I'll pass it back to you. Me? All right. Uh, I will take over, Donna. Thank you very much. So, You're welcome. Uh, Cool. Next slide, please. So I'd now like to introduce uh, Nielta Getney. She is the treasurer and past president of Home Dialysis United. Nielta, welcome to the call. Great to be here, and I would certainly appreciate the uh, invitation. So great, I'd like to great. did you have some questions for me, or did you want me to just dig I, right in? I sure do. I have a couple of questions for you. So okay. Donna, discussed, Donna discussed the benefits of home dialysis, especially during COVID-19. Uh, what benefits have you experienced by dialyzing at home? Well, I just want to give you a quick back, brief background of, of how I came to dialysis. I spent 20 years with CKD by carefully managing it. And I was sent to dialysis clinics several times to, to get a feel for what they were like and swore that I would never, ever go on dialysis. So when I crashed into dialysis, it was, not, it, I, it was kind of ironic because it wasn't convenient for me to die. I was taking care of my mom with dementia, and I simply couldn't abandon her. So I did dialysis with the understanding that I would call hospice later. And then I felt better, and so I started home dialysis, and the rest is history. So I've been dialyzing at home for the past seven years, and it's afforded me an excellent quality of life, unrestricted diet and liquids, and excellent health for someone with a chronic disease. 
I've kept my residual function, which is really key to having an excellent quality of life in healthcare. Um, I've never been more grateful, however, for the ability to dialyze at home as I was when COVID hit. Not having the added pressure of having to travel to a clinic three times a week, risky exposure and infection, that was absolutely huge to me. So instead, I've used this extra time uh, because my HD work travel schedule, of course, came to a crashing halt. Uh, to focus even more on my, on my volunteer work with HDU and improving my home. I've been worked on my uh, diet, my groceries, my cooking and eating habits. And it's really actually been like a silver lining to that cloud. I've, I've done really well um, with, with being uh, on lockdown. Um, what modifications to your treatment plan and using telemedicine have you had to make since COVID-19? So fortunately, I didn't have to make any modifications to my treatment plan. Um, I've been very stable for years and, and not much has really changed. I do little minor tweaks. Uh, I have participated in my monthly clinic visits via telemedicine since March um, and now that's been without issue. And I'll keep doing that until it's safe to leave this my self-imposed quarantine. I know we're high risk and I really, really don't like the stress of leaving my home. It, it's just not worth it to me. So when, when I feel that it's safe, that's when I'm going to go out. Um, I love telehealth because I don't have to drive two hours for a five minute meeting and that's huge to me. Uh, and I, I get the same thing accomplished. They see my blood pressure, they can see my temperature, but it saves me two hours on the road and it occur, uh, even more so during COVID. For example, I can't go there without having to fill my gas my tank, my car with gas. And that is an extra uh, stressor because, you know, again, it's another risk for infection. Um, but the transition to telehealth has been a bit rocky for many. And just recently, Dawn Mormon, who is a, uh, uh, a PAC member with uh, Network 2 in New York, and she and I just wrote a blog about telehealth during COVID. It's on Kidney Views. Uh, and you can search for it. And we discussed the fact that face-to-face -face clinic visits are waived now by CMS until further notice. They've been replaced with telehealth. And this is really important for home patients to continue to feel safe. Um, Dawn also included some great tips that I suggest you read uh, in the blog to get a handle on telehealth. Um, and again, just look it up at, at kidneyviews.org. Thank you, Nelte. Uh, have you, um, we've heard from in-center in patients that, you know, they appreciate the companionship or relationships that they develop with fellow patients in their facility. Have you had any times when you felt isolated either during COVID-19 or private, prior to COVID-19? Uh, if so, what methods have you used to cope or adjust? Well, honestly, since I've been doing home dialysis for the past seven years, I'm actually very accustomed to my own company. Um, and I don't necessarily use the phone, just I don't, I'm not one to pick up and call people and, and chat. Um, but I will check in with a few friends periodically, mostly by text or email. Um, however, at the beginning of COVID, it was new and kind of scary. And everyone was worried, my daughter, my grandkids and I, we all agreed that we would check in daily, just a hi, I'm good text, which is something we previously didn't do. Um, and, but now that we're three, four months into it, we don't do it quite every, every day. Um, but it is hard for some people to keep from feeling isolated, and I totally understand this. So one thing that I do is I check in often on our private dialysis-related Facebook groups, uh, some of the resources that Donna might have mentioned. Um, these are wonderful. They're moderated, they're safe, and it's a great place. And these posters have become my friends and like family over the years. So I feel really comfortable. I can say anything that I want about how I'm feeling and they understand more so than anybody else. Family, friends, they can empathize with you, but they don't get it. So this is a wonderful place for me to go. Uh, you know, I, I, and even though I might, might be moderating our own group, I still feel comfortable relating my frustration sometimes. So in lieu of a face-to-face -face meeting with family and friends, that helps, these kind of things help me with my feelings of isolation. Um, but you, if you feel that depression may be an issue, which is perfectly normal during something like this, then you need to contact your social worker for info and referrals in your area. I mean, there are even mental health support services online and they're covered by Medicare. 
Uh, as someone who has been dialyzing at home for, you know, seven years, uh, what recommendations do you have to someone who is considering a home dialysis treatment option? So I'm going to tell you that it will be the best decision you ever make. It is your disease and it's your treatment. So you really need to learn to manage it. So remember, one thing that's come in the past few years is that a care partner is no longer a requirement for home dialysis. That takes away one of the barriers for patients. So I'm proud to say that I was able to work with HDU Next Stage and the FDA to have that requirement removed um, about, well, it's going on three or four years ago. So once you've learned to do your treatment at home, when you've been trained properly by your nurse, it is your choice if and how much you want to involve anyone in your care and your treatment. I really strongly believe that this is a personal choice and should not be interfered with by you know, outside uh, influence. Personally, I never wanted anyone involved. For me, it is a private time and it's having any around just causes me to make mistakes. So, uh, but that's my choice. The choice is yours to make after you've learned what you need to know to do your dialysis treatment. Um, so, self-cannulation is the second biggest barrier, and it's really obviously important, as only you can truly feel your fistula and know where to stick. And I can't stress this enough. So, even if you choose to stay in center, you should learn to self-cannulate to preserve that, that fistula. And you can use a numbing agent, uh, which I've done, and I swear you won't feel a thing. I've used it for years. I'm a wuss, and I probably will continue to use it for as long as I'm dialyzing. I know yeah, that learning have... to stick is uh, – oh, sorry. I was just going to say that it's really difficult. Uh, I mean, it's terrifying to learn to stick yourself, but there were some tricks that my nurse taught me. One was just to take, get the needles and hold them and, and get a feel for them, and that can help overcome your fear. Then use those needles and stick them into an orange, an apple, whatever, and, and get, again, get that feel. And then what I finally did was I used to close my eyes and actually visualize sticking my arm, which I did for weeks before that first stick. So, and my final tip is, I'm sorry to be so long-winded, but you have to give yourself that first year to settle into a routine, your permission. You, you'll feel like giving up sometimes because it's tough, but don't. It's normal to feel that way, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel and your reward is your freedom. Thank you, Nelte. And we have the resources, um, the telemedicine resources that you spoke about um, on the screen here. Uh, the title of the article that you worked on is Getting the Most Out of Telehealth for Home Dialysis Patients, and it's on uh, homedialysis.org website. Uh, we also want to tell you about uh, the telemedicine resource created by the ESRD NCC and our uh, NPFC land patient subject matter experts. It's called The Doctor Will See You Now, Telemedicine Makes It Easy. And that can be found on the ESRD NCC.org website. Uh, we want to open up the lines now to, uh, to questions. Uh, our panelists are here to answer as many questions as you have in the time frame that we have. So if you have a question for our, our panelists, uh, please use the chat feature in WebEx or the Q&A feature to send us your question. Uh, we do have um, one question in um, that we want to get to. Um, so it is, uh, do you have any words of wisdom for the family members or caregivers of someone who is considering a home dialysis treatment option? Um, I could address that. I would love to. So okay. it's really, really important that the patient is the one who dictates who and how much help he or she needs. Um, you know, when I started with my, uh, I had my grandchildren involved, and my grandson, my daughter, my grandson, they didn't want any part of it. My granddaughter, who was 10 at the time, she loved it. She took, changed my bandages, pulled my needles. My youngest grandson did the fetch and carry for me. But it really helped if you, the patient, help your family come to terms with whatever level of care you feel that you're comfortable with and let them deal with theirs in their own way in their own time. I really don't like that any, when a patient decides to, to do home dialysis, that 
sometimes in training, they're put back in the chair and the care partner is told to do the treatment. That's just replicating in center and it takes away again your, your independence and your freedom. So I really very strongly feel that the family and the care partner shouldn't feel obligated to jump into the role of nurse unless that's a role that you both want and agree to. Once you've learned your treatment and you go home, then you and your family unit, whatever that may be, can decide what works for you and then it can change over time. All right. Thank you, Nelte. Uh, I got a question for, uh, this could be for Donna or you, Nelte. Um, what tips or suggestions would you offer to someone who might be feeling isolated or have a fear of um, feeling isolated? Well, this is Donna. I think Nelte um, answered that question earlier when, you know, she said, First of all, you know, speak with your family, and then secondly, reach out to your social worker and, and talk to them about what it is you're feeling. And then it's, you know, um, it's great that Yelsey has her, has her um, chat group and her blog, and she has, um, you know, resources available, and the NCC has their resources. And I think as long as we're just, you know, we're distributing them to all the facilities and letting the social workers know what is out there to help them, once the patient goes to the social worker and speaks with the social worker, they'll they'll um, you know they'll be able to help the patient and um, you know through their through their um, through their feelings and have some good resources for them as well. Thank you, Donna. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, has there been a hesitancy for hospitals to, to transition unit patients to home because of COVID? Actually, I think it's the other way around. From everything, I sat on a recent working group with HHS and CMS, and actually everyone was talking about there's even more prevalent. They're trying to move patients out directly from the hospital into rehab with uh, home dialysis uh, uh, type treatments um, so they can easily move on training. They're doing the urgent start PD. Uh, so actually, mm -hmm. I think that if anything, COVID has increased the, the ability to go home. They've also put in a waiver so that patients can have assisted uh, help at home if necessary, COVID patients especially. Uh, so I think that HHS has done a, a, a lot to help improve moving home during COVID. Thank you, Nelte, and thank you, Donna, very much. We, both, we all appreciate you uh, being with us to share your experience uh, this afternoon. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Right. We now like to tell you a little bit about uh, one of our new resources from the ESRD NCC. It's called thekidneyhub.org. Uh, it's a resource for patients and professionals. It's a secure, mobile-friendly web tool that was developed by the NCC with some help from our patient subject matter experts. Uh, it has links to COVID-19 emergency resources. It has patient-created resources on transplant, infection prevention, and well-being. And it has ESRD educational materials for new and experienced patients. Uh, to find the Kidney Hub, just go type into your cell phone or tablet, thekidneyhub.org. Uh, our next uh, QuickNAR event is the provider call, which is taking place tomorrow, again, at 5 p.m. Uh, and then our next patient-focused QuickNAR event is next Tuesday at 5 p.m. To find um, our rec past recorded uh, QuickNAR events and future events, please visit kidneycovidinfocenter.com. Uh, for more information and to register for future events. Next slide, please. So we want to thank you all for being with us this afternoon. Uh, to find uh, additional COVID-19 resources, head over to the casercoalition.com website, or you can uh, visit kidneycovidinfocenter.com. Thank you all for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>